Hello everybody, Grace Seeker here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to move your home directory to its own partition. So, for example, I have installed Fedora 26 here, and I have forgot to separate home to its own partition, but it's no worries, I can do that after, after the installation. What I need to do, though, is to boot the system from a live US, live ISO, so just select your, whatever live ISO you prefer. I prefer to boot it from the same system that I installed um, the ISO uh, that I installed uh, the system from. So uh, I choose Fedora again and you do the same or yeah choose just whatever and put it in your computer and launch. Now wait for the live system to actually become alive and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the steps. Okay, now the system is alive. The first thing you need to do is to fire up a terminal. And when you do that, do yourself a favor and launch an interactive root shell because typing sudo all the time is kind of a pain. So sudo dash i and we get a root shell. The first thing after that, of course, the first thing you need to do is to shrink your root file system. Okay, and then after you shrink the root file system, you shrink the partition boundary of root, and then you create a home partition of its own. So we we'll first have to check the file system for errors. That's the way an extension for file system works before shrinking it. So let's do that. Uh, mine is uh, uh, dev sda3 but yours may vary so be sure to check what device name you have before doing any of these steps on checking file system is okay resizing and uh, yeah uh, reformatting without knowing is not so yeah check check the file system and the check is done what I want to do is to resize the partition now I have dedicated 28 gigs to this uh, root partition so but I want to resize it to 15 However, since we'll be doing two resizes, one for the file system and one for the partition boundary, I resize the file system to a size lesser than what I want, and then resize the partition boundary to the desired size and extend the file system to match the partition boundary. That way is the safest, and uh, that is what I recommend you to do. So let's type resize to fs for the extension for file system, the device name, which is the SDA3 and the and the and the size for your file system. So 14 gigs. It will take a while. And when it's done, you need to go low level and resize the partition boundary itself. You can either use fdisk or cfdisk, whatever you prefer. I will go with fdisk. So fdisk and then the device name representing my hard drive, which is dev sda. Yours may vary, be sure to select the correct one. And first, let's print to see what we have in here. So as you can see, the third partition is showing 26 gigabytes, but the file system in it is actually 14. So I will resize the partition boundary to 15 gigs right now by first deleting it. Don't worry. First of all, if you delete the partition, the changes are not yet written to disk. Second, the, only the entry gets removed. You can always recreate it with the same start sector here and a last sector of the size of what you desire. So let's do that. N, P for the primary partition, number 3 is the default. And make sure the uh, sector number, the start sector number matches the one before. And in this case, it does perfectly. So we just type enter. And a last sector, we want it 15, so 15. And now it says that it has detected an extension for signature on the file system we just create on the partition we just created. And it asks us whether we want to remove that signature. Obviously we don't because our root file system will get wiped if we do so. So no, preserve the signature and type W enter to write the changes to disk. It will notify you that the partition is table is in use and you have to type part probe or kpart x to apply it. So that's what we're gonna do and it is applied. Now, resize the file system again to match the partition boundary by typing resize to fs and then dev sda3 without any additional arguments and it will automatically detect the best size for it. 
and now it has been resized. Let's check the file system for error one more time. E2 FSCK forcing the check on dev SDA3. And it is healthy. Isn't that cool? Now let's create our home partition. So we launch FDisk again on our hard disk. And we type N. We create a partition. I'm using an MBR partition table. That's why it wants me to create an extended as a fourth. But I'll go with primary for this virtual machine. Um, and first sector is the default, last sector is the default again, and I am presented with an 11 gigabytes of home file system. Perfect. Now, type W to write the partition table to disk, part probe again to apply it, and now if you type LSBLK, you'll see that a new partition is in the device, is in the devices, and it is at the SDA4 here. Now, we have to format it, of course, to give it a file system. I'm going to go with extension 4. Um, now, here's the thing. If you do gaming, if you install Steam, you know, install games from it, choose a file system default to Linux. You know, BDRFS, extension file systems and all that, because Steam warns that XFS and JFS are not so compatible with some games, so uh, I recently found that out. And I'm going to use extension 4 here. And for that, we'll type mk or make to fs or no, actually mke to fs, right? Yeah, dash t for the type of the file system, which is extension four, and then the device name, which is dev sda four, and it is now created. Make sure you copy this UUID as you would want to enter it to the fs tab later. So highlight it. Copy, I'm done. Now it's time to mount your root partition in the live system so that you can actually do stuff in it. Dev as the A3 mounted in MNT. And if you switch to MNT, we'll see that it's there. All the data is there, no data is wiped, which is exactly what we want. And um, yeah, now we need to make a directory for our new partition. We need to mount it there before we can mount it at the main home directory, right? So we want to move some files, obviously. So type mkdir and then new home. Don't put a forward slash in front of it because it will create a, create a directory in the live system. Okay, now mount the newly created partition in that directory, dev sda4 in new home. Now it's time to copy those files from the old home directory to the new home partition. In order to do that I'm going to use rsync because it has very very good options for preserving every little bit of detail about files on the file system such as owners, permissions, groups, and uh, yeah everything else. So the command is rsync obviously and then comes the options. Now we want to do an archive copy and it will take care of the permissions, owner, and group, plus some other little stuff. But what we also wanted to do is to preserve hard links as well, copy over the hard links, which is good, what we want, copy over ACLs, and uh, preserve the extended attributes. And then we want it to be a little bit kind and use the human readable units in its representation. We also want some progress to see what's going on. So we type dash dash progress as an additional option. And then we would also want rsync to not to touch the access time on those files when it copies them. So actually the copy, the copying uh, takes less time. So dash dash no a time. Now we type the directory from which the files are going to be copied from and obviously that's our old home directory and uh, type an asterisk to uh, you know make sure that our, our, our sync selects everything and the second argument is obviously the new home partition now press enter and the files are all copied now, as you can see I don't have that much of that much of data because the, the partition is new I only just recently created uh, the Fedora installation so the files are already copied. Type sync to make sure all buffers are written to disk. It might take a while if you're on a hard disk. Lesser if you're on an SSD. But
but it, it will ensure that all the buffers and RAM are written to disk. Now, the next step is to delete the content of the old home directory so that we have a fresh mount point for the new, our new home partition and the old data, we don't want it anymore, so we remove it by typing rm-rf home everything that is in it. Now be careful with this command because it is not reversible. You will wipe everything in your home directory, so make sure first of all you have backups and then that the copying has went well and everything and all the precautions. But uh, this is a virtual machine so I am comfortable with removing everything. And now if we list the contents we'll see that it's nothing there. Now it's the time to create the fstab entry for our home partition and we want that we will do that using nano. But Fedora doesn't carry nano in its live state so we'll have to install it. You know, to install nano your package manager obviously may vary. App to install nano, pacman-s nano, you know, everything. Uh, all the good stuff, all the good commands to launch an application with. And I'm going to wait until it installs. There we go. It is installed now. And uh, what we want to do is to launch nano with the fstab argument. So etc, fstab. Don't put any forward slash. Again, this is your mounted partition. Don't modify anything in the lab system. Now, the UUID you just copied, you paste it here. So type UUID equals and right click, paste. There it is. Mount point is home. File system is the old extension 4 with the defaults argument. You can type no a time to uh, you know speed it up a little if you want. And uh, 1 and 2 as the default options for uh, yeah, FSTAT. Control X, Y, and Enter to save the file. And now what we're going to do is to uh, inform the init RAM FS of the new FS tab because I'm not sure how Fedora handles it, and I don't want to risk just restarting the system to face in uh, you know a home an empty home directory. So I, I will I will want a ch root to uh, my new Fedora installation and uh, modify or update the init RAM FS. Steps for ch root are obviously mounting all the necessary partitions and virtual virtual file systems. So let's get to it. I have a boot partition, so I would want to mount that, which is dev sda1. So yeah, dev sda1 in mnt boot. And now I have an mnt, so I'll mount all the virtual file systems here mount dash dash r bind dev and dev sys and sys run and run and you obviously want to proc mount dash t proc none proc and yep it's there now you can see h root by typing ch root dot slash bin slash bash dash l for a login shell Ta-da! Here it is. Now update your initram fs in Fedora by typing dracoot dash f. For arch, I believe, is mk init cpio dash p linux. Okay. For um, Debian or Ubuntu, I believe it is update dash init ram fs dash u. Gentle users probably already know how to do that, so I'm not going to say anything. And uh, yeah, now it's done. Nothing more to do, so just exit out of the CH root. Go back one directory and unmount everything that you just mounted under MNT. The dash L means mount, unmount everything. Do a lazy unmount. Uh, yeah. And uh, sync the buffers. Very good. Exit from the shell, from the terminal. And now resize or and now reboot your system. There we go. The boot screen shows up. It's always good.
and there it is our new login screen now before I go into the system I want to make sure the home is mounted so I'll go to a TTY by typing control alt and you know F3 and uh, log in as root and type mount let's see now uh, dev sda4 on home do you see that type you know exactly here type extension 4 so everything is good yay now let's go back to our graphical interface and log in I can't wait to see the system come up perfectly and there it is guys want to check your files over there just go to uh, home and check it obviously I didn't have that many files to um, to show I haven't even launched the system but uh, you know I want to check Obviously, I had some hidden files in there, bash RC and all that stuff, and they are all there. Local share is there. Everything is copied. See that? All the good stuff. So, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and find it helpful. I will come back to you soon with uh, some more guides on file systems and stuff, because I love those things. And catch you all later. Peace.